Welcome to worship here at Shepherd of the Hills. We are going to be uh, doing the Holden Evening Prayer. Uh, I hope that you have received your copies from wherever you were getting them from. Uh, thank you for joining us. Jesus Christ, you are the light of the world. The light no darkness can overcome. Stay with us now, for it is evening, and the day is almost over. Let your light scatter the darkness, and shine within your people here. Joyous light of heavenly glory, loving glow of God's own face. You who sing creation's story, shine on every land and race. Now as evening falls around us, we shall raise our songs to you. God of daybreak, God of shadows, come and light our hearts anew. In the stars that grace the darkness, in the blazing sun of dawn, in the light of peace and wisdom, we can hear your quiet song. Love that fills the night with wonder, love that warms the weary soul, love that bursts all chains asunder, set us free and make us whole. The heaven's splendor, every dancing star of night. Make us shine with gentle justice, let us each reflect your light. Mighty God of all creation, gentle Christ who lights our way. Loving spirit of salvation, lead us on to endless day. May God be with you all, and also with you. Let us sing our thanks to God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. Blessed are you, creator of the universe. From old you have led your people by night and day. May the light of your Christ make our darkness bright, for your word and your presence are the light of our pathways, and you are the light and life of all creation. Amen. before you, the lifting up of my hands as an offering to you. Oh God, I call to you, come to me now, oh hear my voice when I cry to you. Let my prayer rise up like incense Oh, 
creator of life. All praise be to Christ and the Spirit of love. Let my prayer rise up like incense before you, the lifting up of my hands as a covering to May our prayers come before you, O God, as incense, and may your presence surround and fill us so that in union with all creation we might sing your praise and your love in our lives. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Gospel of St. John, the 12th chapter. Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, the home of, La to, came to Bethany, the home of Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. There they gave a dinner for him. Martha served, and Lazarus was one of those at the table with him. Mary took a pound of costly perfume made of pure nard, anointed Jesus' feet, and wiped them with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But Judas Iscariot, one of his disciples, the one who was about to betray him, said, Why was this perfume not sold for 300 denarii and the money given to the poor? He said this not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. He kept the common purse and used, it to, used to steal what was put into it. Jesus said, leave her alone. She bought it so that she might keep it for the day of my burial. You always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. The light shines in the darkness, and the, and the darkness, darkness has, has not overcome it. This is an incredibly familiar story for many of us, this reading from John's Gospel. Matthew, Mark, and Luke also include it, although they make a few editorial changes. The first three, called the synoptics, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, have this placed as two days before the Passover. And they don't give all the, the information, so to speak, that John gives it. John doesn't have it the week of Holy Week. He has it six days before Passover. John's Gospel doesn't follow the same pattern the other three do, but the story nonetheless appears in all three, uh, excuse me, in all four Gospels. And while I chose the Gospel of John because it identifies the woman, in the others, it's just a woman does this. But I want to use John's Gospel because of that. So we have the disciples, I would assume, and others do as well, there in the house with Simon, Mary and, excuse me, Lazarus, Mary, and Martha. Maybe it's a celebration of the fact that Jesus has raised Lazarus from the dead. He has restored him to health, had done so some time before. Maybe it's just the reality that Mary and Martha were tremendous supporters of Jesus. But here he is, here they all are, in this house. And in an act of devotion, Mary, who you'll probably also remember in the other stories of Mary and Martha, Mary is sit always sitting at Jesus' feet, always listening to the words he says. Martha is so busy in the kitchen getting food ready, but Mary is at his feet, listening. And I don't mean that pejoratively, I mean that just simply that's the way people would be. So here she is with this expensive ointment. 
300 denarii. That's a full year's wage. And she's pouring it on his feet. I want to make the connection also that this, in John's Gospel, precedes what Jesus is about to do with his disciple a week or so later when he washes their feet as a sign of love. So here's Mary showing her love for Jesus. Now, in, the, uh, in, in Matthew's account, the disciples grumble along with, Laz- with, uh, excuse me, with Judas. Judas is here por- portrayed by John as uh, such an evil guy. He steals from the treasury. He doesn't care about the poor. But in the other gospel accounts, all of the disciples berate Mary for doing this act, for breaking this container. Now, the other piece you got to recognize is in this broken vessel moment, when she breaks the top off, it's literally breaking and snapping the top. It's not like a screw top or a cork you could put back in. It's use it all or nothing. Wow, 300 denarii, a year's salary going to ointment. And it's not like you can save some for later. Now, the disciples and Judas, being part of that group, are probably being a little bit um, ridiculous in their statement. In, in John's gospel especially, it's Jude, uh, Judas saying, we could have used this money for the poor. That makes sense, doesn't it? Because Jesus was all about the poor. He was all about making sure that others were taken care of. So Judas, in a sense, is offering the words and the learning that he's received from Jesus. But this broken vessel that Mary has destroyed as she has poured the expensive nard on Jesus' feet. This broken vessel. One might expect Jesus to side with the disciples and Judas and say, you're right, they should have used it. Mary, you should have been a little less extravagant. Mary, you should have been a little less, uh, should have been a little more frugal and saved something. But he doesn't. Instead of saying, yes, we should always save for the future, he instead commends Mary for what she's done. Mary now becomes that broken vessel because she has poured all of her into Jesus, onto his feet at this moment. She's wiping his feet with her hair. She's showing reverence, but she's also giving every part of her. Maybe that's a lesson for you and I in this Lenten season. It's about giving all, not holding back, not making sure that we have enough to cover whatever else it is we think we need to cover, but giving all of it to Jesus in that devotion moment. My godson, now this goes back a long time, I was in Santa Rosa at Thanksgiving Lutheran. <sighs> Wyatt, my godson, um, was his baptism anniversary falls every year in the Lenten season. Wyatt was a lover of chocolate. He and I shared our chocoholic lifestyle. And so, because his baptism anniversary was like somewhere around Palm Sunday that year, I decided that I would get a huge baptismal shell made out of candy. I went to a local store that made chocolate candies, and I paid them big bucks for this. And I gave it to Wyatt on his baptismal anniversary. I had poured a lot of me into it, so to speak. And I wanted him to enjoy this huge baptismal shell of great chocolate. And as I gave it to him, I wished him a good baptismal anniversary. And I said something like, see you Sunday at church, expecting that on Sunday, he would give me a report 
of how this chocolate tasted. And maybe, maybe he would give me a hunk of the shell. Sunday came and went. Wyatt was in church. Wyatt said not a word about the baptismal chocolate shell that he had gotten. And I was a little bit taken back. He usually got excited when he got chocolate, and he shared that story, those stories with me. But I didn't think too much. In the course of that week, probably around Tuesday, um, his dad stopped by in the church office, as he would do from time to time, and he said, you know, Wyatt didn't tell you about chocolate this year, did he? No, no, what, what, what's going on? He gave up chocolate for Lent. <laughs> and I went absolutely white. The broken vessel of me having given him this incredibly rich, heavy chocolate was now realizing that I had literally put temptation in his hands. He could have broken his covenant. He could have eaten it, and nobody would have been the wiser. Well, he would have. But Howard, his dad, says, so right now it's sitting in the refrigerator waiting for Easter morning. <laughs> and I said, is he going to get up early Easter morning and eat some of it before he comes to church? Howard, he'll probably eat all of it before he comes to church. He'll get up as early on Easter, and if I tell him that Easter Sunday starts at midnight, he'll be up at 12.01. Come Easter Sunday, Wyatt walks into church, and he gives me a hunk of his baptismal shell chocolate candy. And I said, Wyatt, thank you for the gift, and Wyatt, I'm sorry I made you wait more time. He offered, it was good. I mean, the chocolate was good, but the waiting was good too. I think he understood the sense of being broken, being all in. He had committed to something, and he wasn't going to let this incredible gift that his godfather, the most important other person in his life, had given him, because he knew what he had committed to. Mary, in the story of anointing Jesus' feet with, with the nard, knew what she was in for. She was all in, so to speak. The disciples wanted to play it safe, save some for later. Wyatt could have taken a nibble or two and played it safe, saving the bulk of it for Easter morning and eat it all before he came to the early service. But he chose not to. He became, for me at that moment, a hero of the faith. He understood his commitment. He understood that if he had broken that commitment, it would not be whole. It would not be real. It would not be good. Mary spends all of it on Jesus. And just imagine that. If indeed she had played it safe, if indeed she could have figured out some way to put a cork in it and just put a little bit on his feet at that time, she could have gone and anointed him after his death. But that never would have been, would it? Because Mary, whether she knew it or not, needed to break the vessel, to be the broken vessel, to be all in on the discipleship moment because you may remember the story of that first Easter morning when the women went to the tomb to anoint the body of Jesus for burial and he was not there. I think the message of Mary anointing, of Mary breaking, of Mary giving all is a statement that we need to do it at the moment we can. Because if we wait, if we play it safe, it may never be the right moment. 
We need to be broken in that fashion, to be all in in our discipleship with Jesus. Because if we wait, when will the right time be? When will we have an opportunity to give all? In Jesus' name, amen. went from God to a town called Nazareth to a woman whose name was Mary. The angel said to her, Rejoice, O highly favored, for God is with you. You shall bear a child his name shall be Jesus, the Chosen One of God Most High. And Mary said, I am the servant of my God, I live to do your will. My soul proclaims your greatness, O God, and my spirit rejoices in you have worked with love on your servant here and blessed me all my life through. Great and mighty are you, O Holy One, strong is your kindness evermore. How you favor the weak and holy one, humbling the proud of Cast the mighty down from their thrones and uplifted the humble of heart. You have filled the hungry with wondrous things and left the wealthy no part. Great and mighty are you, O faithful one. Strong is your justice, strong your love. As you promised to Sarah and Abraham, kindness forevermore. My soul proclaims your greatness, O God, and my spirit rejoices in you. You have looked with love on your servant here and blessed me all my life through. God of mercy, hold us in love. 
us in love. Keep watch on our loved ones and keep us from danger. God of mercy, hold us in love. For all the beloved who rest in your mercy. God of mercy, hold us in love. Help us, comfort us all of our days. Keep us, hold us, gracious God. Great and merciful God, source and ground of all goodness and life, give to your people the peace that passes all understanding and the will to live your gospel of mercy and justice through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. God, remember us in your love and teach us to pray. Our, our Father, Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, Glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless our God. Praise and thanks to you. May God, creator, bless us and keep us. May Christ be ever light for our lives. May the spirit of love be our guide and path. For all of our days.